from Breville. Today we're going to talk about the BES870 and why it doesn't get pressure. The first reason it doesn't get pressure is about the coffee. So to just have a little understanding about coffee, coffee's roasted, the first five days doesn't taste very nice, the next three weeks it's in its prime, then it starts to break down the sugars in the oils. You can't fridge it, you can't freeze it, it doesn't like light, it doesn't like air. So maintaining coffee over the, over the time that you have this coffee is really important. So you might want to get yourself a little vacuum sealer to maintain it. It won't prolong it, but it'll maintain the coffee. So coffee in its prime will only last for four weeks before it starts to break down the sugars and the oils. So that's the most important thing. So you must get coffee directly from the roaster or directly from the coffee shop. No good coffee comes from a supermarket. The next thing that's important is the dose. So this is the second most important thing. So if I don't put enough coffee in my group handle or quarter filter, I won't get enough back pressure to lift the dial. So we'll show you examples of that a little bit further down and show you with or without the amount of coffee that you need in the dose <coughs> itself. And the third most important thing is the grind. So with grind, the best way to sort it out is to think sand and rocks. Sand being too fine and the water can't get through and rocks being too coarse and the water just rushes through. So we'll give you examples of that um, just further into the video as well. So the first thing we're going to show you is what old coffee does. So these beans here were roasted back in February, on the 13th of February this year. So we're going to put some of them in the BS870. starting up the machine, you should always find the machine to get it ready. So now let's start. <laughs> Like I'm opening a door, I give it a 15 kilo tamper, as even as possible. Now just to make sure my dose is correct, so the test we're doing today. So we've given you this complimentary razor, which is worth $20. It is patented to Breville, so you won't find it on any other machine. So I'm just going to razor off anything excess. There's a tiny little bit of excess there. So now I know my dose is correct. So now I've got the perfect dose. It's perfectly flat, which makes it important to where the water's going to run. I'm going to lock it back into the group head and I'm going to give it a shot. So this is, a, this is a test that we're looking for the pressure gauge to move into around the 12 o'clock position. It's come out a little bit earlier. It's coming out quite fast actually like the river. My pressure gauge hasn't moved and I haven't got it great. Cremer at all. It's quite thin. Not much cream at all in the light and colour. It's really what they call an um, extractive style coffee overall. But it's all duly because of the age of my beans. So having fresh beans plays a little role. So now we're going to exit out the beans from the hopper. So I'll just show you a little trick. Now the cheapest grinder I've ever seen do this is about 900 bucks. So it's nice that we put it in all our grinders. It's now captured all the beans into the hopper itself. I can put the packet back underneath, release it, and it'll all go back into the container itself, into your vacuum seal. I don't want to put it in the vacuum seal because they are pretty old. Um, this stays and going all over the floor. I'm now just going to remove So these were roasted on 
the 20 that put back on this year, which is only a week or so down. Fresh beans in there. So that's the only difference that we're going to do. But now I know it's fresh beans. This time, I'm not going to put enough beans in there. So this is what happens when you don't put enough beans in there. We know the beans are fresh. I'll stop it halfway. So it looks like I've got a fair bit of coffee in there. As you can see, my silver band on my coffee ring is, is quite low. It should be about this position. So I'm putting less coffee in there. And this is why a single cup is not recommended. You should always use the two cup filters on your, on your machine um, to have the best results and to get the right pressure. Single cup will never give you pressure. So this way I've got fresh beans, but I haven't got enough coffee in there as such. So there we go, another machine. I'll probably get very similar results. It's still gushing out. It's not giving me quite the flow that I'm looking for. My pressure gauge hasn't moved. And I've got basically under-extracted coffee again. Not a great crema. It's quite thin in range. There we go. The other telltale sign is that I'll have a lot of water on the top as well. That's, that's identifying that I haven't got enough coffee in there either. So it'll come out quite sloppy. It won't come out as a puck. It'll just come out quite sloppy. So that's generally telling me I haven't got enough coffee, which is really important to my dose. All right, so we talked a little bit earlier about why the pressure gauge doesn't move into the right position. And the third reason is the grind itself. When you're associating with coffee is sand and rocks. Sand being too fine and the water can't get through. Rocks being too coarse and the water rushes through. So if I go extremes, so we're going to go extremes, we're going to go to the, the one setting for the first one, which is the sand scenario. If I have used coffee um, previously at a different setting, I need to get rid of a little bit of the coffee that's in the chamber itself. So there's a little bit of coffee in that chamber, so I'll get it correct ready. So this is the one setting. So I'm just putting the blue handle up now to get my dose correct. Dose is the last thing that we want to set up on these machines because I can, I can sort of have that the whole way through uh, by using the dose itself to get the right part out of it. I know I haven't got enough coffee there. There's certainly not enough coffee on that side. So I'm just going to give a little bit more coffee here. That's probably enough almost. We'll soon find out. So normally just by hitting it as much as you can and then ironing it out generally gives me a good range of dose. Just to check that, grab the tamper, pop it onto the side like I'm opening a drawer, give it a 15 kilo tamper, making sure that that silver line, as you can see, is at the, at the edge of your group handle filter itself. Give it a nice little push and twist. Now I'm just going to check to make sure I've got enough or I haven't got enough. That's it, really spot on at the moment, which is good. So no excess there. So now I know I've got the right dose, so that won't interfere with what's going on with the actual gauge. Now we're going to see what's going to happen with this machine this evening. So just after low pressure pre-fusion, so when the noise of the machine starts to beef up, it's gone right into the white setting here. I haven't got any coffee whatsoever coming out of here. Sometimes I get a couple of drips, um, but that's telling me it's over-extracted or haven't got anything um, as far as the grind is going. So that's just too fine and over-extracted and burnt coffee itself. So that's, the, that's the fine setting. So now we're going to the coarser setting. So I've, I've got it all the way to the 16 setting. Now, part of that will be still at one. So I've got to get rid of a little bit of the excess to get a true reading here. setting. 
lift saver. That's definitely too much in there because it's very coarse. I'll get rid of any excess because we want to get my dose correct. So this little tool will help me set up the machine itself. Anything excess now, I've got the right amount, but we know it's very, very coarse. Lock it into the group there, of course, run with the shop. Between each shop, so you get rid of any excess coffee. It also primes and gets the temperature correct. Okay, now we're going to hit the coarse setting. So we want the coffee to fall just after lower pressure pre infusion so when the machine is slightly noisier. So it's a little early, as you can see, and then you've gone into high pressure. It's already coming out very watery. My pressure gauge hasn't moved, as you can see. It's very unextracted, very light in colour, of course, um, and very watery, the end result that's come out of it. So now we've got to try and find the right setting for this machine. All right, so we're going to start at eight and try and find out where we're supposed to be. So setting up at eight. Because coffee is like glass, it'll actually destroy that seal a little quicker than it needs to. So it's always important to give it a quick wipe. You'll see them do that in the shops. Glass. And let's see. And let's see what comes out. So we're waiting for a low pressure pre infusion to finish its rain. It's early and it's right on line. It's actually not bad. Eight is a good setup that I've got the right pressure as you can see I've got the right flow so I got really lucky and eight was the setting obviously if, it, if I didn't get that full pressure um, or if it came out a little earlier than that I'd have to go finer um, if it came out early if it comes out later then I know I need to go a little bit coarser on that setting but eight seems to be the right setting for this machine